Welcome to today's tutorial from the TwinSafe department. Today we are talking about safe brake control on an H8000. My name is Martin Früchtel from the Product Management Safety. After handling the basic information and the demo system architecture, I give a few words about the approach of SPC on the H8000. And after the live demonstration, as always, I give a short outlook uh, of the next tutorial and we finish the session with a Q&A on the SPC. The goal of today's tutorial is the extension of an existing TwinSafe Motion Wizard project with SPC functionality. As prerequisites, as always, you need a TwinCare 3 version greater or equal to 4024.11 you need a T9000 version greater or equal to 1211, a TwinSafe firmware on the AX8000 greater or equal to 03. You need an AX8000 firmware greater or equal to 0104 with the default module ID active. And for today's tutorial, you need a motor with integrated holding brake. The start of our tutorial today is a TwinCare 3 project with a standard PLC and an ER6910 project. Our demo system consists of an CX for the EtherCAT communication and a standard PLC. We have a ER6910 master TwinSafe logic, which our AX8000 should talk to. We have an ER1918 with an connected light barrier. We have an AX8000 X2XX in the safe motion version and of course a motor with integrated holding brake. The required safety functionality for today is we want to control the brake release and the lock from the AX8000 project, but the complete SPC functionality should be controlled via FSOE from a EL6910 point of view. The approach of the SPC is quite simple. If you use an AX8000, per default, the safe brake control is deactivated. So in order to use SPC, you need to activate the safety parameter C13001, which is called brake control enabled. And as soon as you activate the safe brake control, you need a release of the brake within TwinSafe in order to be able to control the brake from the functional control. So you have to use the safe output in the internal process image, channel A brake release, or of course channel B if you want to use channel B. And after you released the brake within our TwinSafe system, you have the control of the brake in the functional part of your control system. And you even have the corresponding signal from the functional request within TwinSafe available, which is called channel A drive request activate brake in the internal process image. But you don't have to handle it within the TwinSafe system because as shown in the picture right below, after the TwinSafe logic is evaluated and the SPC signal from the TwinSafe is set or not set, it is automatically evaluated in combination with the functional control of the brake. So you can use the functional brake independently from the TwinSafe as long as the TwinSafe acknowledges your brake control. So as long as SPC is one, for example, you can uh, use the functional brake independent from the cycle time of the TwinSafe logic. After that, we can already start with our live demonstration. As mentioned before, we have a TwinCare 3 solution with the standard PLC, our EL6910 project and our IO configuration. And in the first step, we create a new safety project with our TwinSafe motion wizard. So we go to a start safe motion wizard. We choose our AX8000. We configure the feedback, which is multi-turn in our case. In the safety function overview today, we 
change nothing because we want a simple STO SS1 project. We rename our AXI 1000 project. For today, it's called SPC Demo. We do the mapping to the EL6910 so that the connection gets built automatically. We verify the safe addresses and create the project. After the AX8000 project was created, we basically just have to go to the alias device of the target system of the AX8000. And within the internal safety parameters, we go to the already mentioned safety parameters C130 or 1 and enable our safe break control. Now that the break control is enabled, we have to control the SPC bit from the TwinSafe logic to get the motor running. But before going into the logic to really control the SPC, we still have to configure our connections between the AX8000 and the EL6910 because we'll, we want to control it from the EL6910. So on the side of the AX8000, we go to the connection to the EL6910, go to the alias device, and we edit the process image of the inputs. And after the SS1 bit, we insert a new bit. We have to decrease the size of the next reserved uh, space in order to fulfill the FSOE specification. We rename that bit to SPC channel A. So basically, we now have the bit available within the AX8000, but we still have to do the same thing on the EL6910 side. At the moment, it has to be done manually. So on the EL6910, we open the connection to the AX8000. And there we have to edit, of course, the output process image. And again, after SS1, we insert the new SPC bit. We decrease the size of the reserved space and rename the corresponding bit to SPC channel A. So now with both sides changed, we have the possibility to send the SPC signal over FSOE to the AX8000. And we have the possibility on the AX8000 to receive that bit. So in the next step, we can integrate our logic. So we go to the TwinSafe group for the connection inputs. And to be able to handle the SPC according to the already existing bits, we add new variables to the first decouple function block to get the SPC channel A from the communication. And the output of that signal we give to a variable in the channel A variable list, SPC command, we call that bit. And when saving, we see already an error message that there is an assignment missing. So we go to the variable mapping, the SPC command. So the output of the decouple function log, we want to use it later in the error handling. We just to have to assign the input signal to the alias device SPC channel A from the ER6910. And then within the channel A error handling, we integrate our new SPC logic. So we bring up our toolbox and we put in a new end function block, which is there for the SPC control. And in our example today, we want to uh, control the STO and the SPC. So we want to activate the break when S the STO signal is present 
and when there is an SPC command from the communication. So our second AND input is our SPC command from the channel A variable list. So we enter channel A dot SPC command to get the link. Of course, you can also do that via our mouse clicks, but we choose to do it via variable typing in this case. And the output of the end function block should go to the SPC control. So we call that variable SPC channel A out. And assign it to the SPC bit within the process image. So we go to the variable mapping, go to the variable SPC channel A out and choose the alias device target system. So it's going to the local process image of the AX8000 and choose channel A break release. And basically that was all the basic configuration on the AX8000 side. So basically we are receiving the SPC command from the ER6910 and in combination with our STO output we are controlling the SPC, the safe break control. As always, the last thing which is missing is the connections of the EL6910 project. So we go to the EL6910 project we already prepared and we assign all the missing variables. So the STO for channel A and channel B. then the SPC bit we want to use in this tutorial, we assign it to SPC channel A, and of course the missing SS1 and error X signals. When all the bits are connected, we are done with the implementation of our today's tutorial. So we just have to go to the multi-download to get both safety projects updated on the AX8000 and the EL6910. So we go to the multi-download, choose our two projects, enter the username and password and verify the serial numbers of the two components. and start the download. After download, we are verifying the CRCs and activate the bo both projects. Because we changed the process image of the EL6910 and the AX8000, we are reactivating the configuration And after that, we can start to examine if our SPC is working. So basically, we are now controlling the EL6910 SPC signal. Uh, we are transferring it to the AX8000. And within the AX8000 error handling, we are combining it with STO. So we go to the online view of the channel A error handling we see that the STO signal is present, the SPC command and the SPC channel A out signal is present. And if everything was assigned correctly, we have a break release from the TwinSafe site and we can try to run the motor from the functional side. So we go to the drive manager of channel A we go to the top run motor. Yes, we are sure. And then we can configure 
our multiple movement. So if everything works correctly, after entering the velocity and the target position, we click on start. There's no error message and we activate the scope. And we see that our SPC is working fine. So the twin safe gives the release to the brake based on the STO signal and the SPC command. And we can use the motor as we wish. As already mentioned before, in this tutorial, we are combining the STO signal and the SPC command to control the SPC, the safe brake control on the AX8000. But everything is based on your current application. So it, it's also an alternative, for example, to use the SPC command. And based on the SPC command, you trigger STO and SPC to be sure that the SPC, so the brake is only locked and there cannot be any torque anymore. So, but everything is based on the application and you can do it as you wish. As next tutorial, we are examining safe brake test. We are currently uh, still in the communication with TUV suit with our notified body, but next week, definitely we will talk about the safe brake test, how you can realize it with an AX8000. The tutorial after that, it's not 100% uh, sure yet what the topic will be exactly. So thanks a lot for your attention. I hope we will hear again next week with the safe brake test.